Hey everyone, it is Danny, and welcome to this update video on what is going on across the tropics. So this is another countdown video, of course, and we are currently 81 days from the official start of the 2023 Atlantic hurricane season. And so I know that I'm not really sounding like myself, and that is because I caught the flu yesterday. So I'm not doing too good this morning, but nevertheless, let's go ahead and talk about what's going on out there. And so before I go into details please do subscribe if you haven't done so already and tap the notification bell so that you never miss an important update all right and so let's go ahead and return to this uh infrared satellite imagery of the caribbean and uh, we can see here that there isn't too much happening across the region as usual at this time of year most persons are likely waking up to some beautiful sunny skies this morning however for the southeastern caribbean persons are probably waking up to a bit of overcast skies so uh nothing much as i said maybe just a pop-up shower here and there in some of those areas of cloud cover but outside of the caribbean we can see that we see more colors which indicate that there is a lot more convective activity taking place and also for northern south america so as i mentioned in yesterday's video there is that severe rainfall threat and even looking at the satellite imagery right now we can see that a lot of activity is taking place right now across the northern part of the continent so highly favorable environment uh, for all of that rainfall to be taking place and this is going to be persistent uh, for the next several days but going back to the Caribbean we can also see that pattern that eastward pattern of those clouds that look a bit feathery so those are cirrus clouds which form in the higher level of the atmosphere and so it's likely that because of their altitude they're being carried toward the east by upper level winds which would explain that pattern uh, contrary to what we would usually see where we have activity coming from the tropical Atlantic into the Caribbean. Okay, and so we're going to be talking about the temperature dip, the latest on the temperature dip and what the models are expecting, as well as the Saharan air layer. And uh, we'll also be looking at the temperature, the sea surface temperature across the Caribbean. Alright, so we're going to be starting out with the sea surface temperatures and we can see here that as of the latest analysis, it's not very warm right now in the Caribbean. We're seeing 27 degrees Celsius, mainly that 27 Celsius isotherm. But of course, as we progress more to the summer months and the hurricane season on the whole, we're going to see an increase in temperature across the North Atlantic. But we can see that over in the Eastern Pacific, the temperatures there are definitely on a roll. We see 20 nine degrees celsius so uh, all of that warmth and moisture actually helps to induce a lot of convective activity over there so as we're going to be heading into what is expected to be uh, an El Nino in the latter part of this year, it's going to be, uh, it's going to make the region even more favorable for a lot of activity to take place. As I speak about that, let's go ahead and take a look at the latest value here in this chart. So we're seeing that uh, for the ENSO region, the latest is minus 0.161. So we're in that neutral zone, of course. We're in that neutral zone between plus 0.5 and minus 0.5. And above 0.5 is where we have uh, the El Nino phase. And so that is what forecasters are anticipating as we're going to be heading into the latter months of this year. However, for now, uh, we're in the neutral phase, and if we head to that El Nino phase, there is a likelihood that we can see decreased tropical cyclone activity across the North Atlantic. But there can be any, uh, there can be many changes, and the actuality can exceed what was expected. So we just have to wait and see what's going to be happening. And so now let's go ahead and talk about the Saharan air layer forecast. And so if you're located in the southeastern Caribbean, you might be waking to some hazy skies and that would be as a result of the Saharan dust that is currently blanketing the region. 
looking at what is expected as we're going to be heading into the middle part of this week here, you can see that uh, there is that mass of dust that is expected to be making its way across the central Caribbean at that time. So between now and then, the most of the Lesser Antilles, especially the Windward Islands, are likely going to be noticing that haze and there is yet another dust plume that is likely to move into the region after that would dissipate. And so, of course, I'm going to be keeping you guys updated on it as time goes by. And now let's go ahead and talk about that temperature dip that is possible as we're going to be heading throughout this week. And so we're going to be looking at the Euro and the GFS models. And so where we have more of those uh, blues or those cool colors, that is where we have below normal temperatures. White indicates that the temperature is pretty much normal and the warmer colors, those yellows, oranges, and reds indicate above normal temperature. And so as you're going to be heading into the middle of this week, uh, it's likely that a cold front is going to be exiting the U.S., bringing along with it those uh, that massive cool air and so it is likely that impacts will be felt across parts of the northern caribbean we see the euro showing those blues for the bahamas parts of cuba haiti and jamaica and over into the yucatan as well and so as we're going to be headed into friday the model is expecting that we're going to be seeing more of those lighter shades of blue and most of the northern caribbean uh feeling those cooler than normal temperatures but that would be more for the early morning or the evening and night hours because the Caribbean receives direct rays off the sun and especially because there is barely any activity right now uh, those cooler than normal temperatures are not likely to be felt as they're going to be heading throughout most of the day but rather uh, when the sun sets and before sunrise. And then as for the GFS, the GFS is showing something similar here where we have that massive cool air moving down into the Caribbean. And then by Friday, we see these pale shades of blue. So uh, a major temperature dip is not expected by the main models here. However, it could still be noticeable, especially in the more elevated areas. And so guys, in regards to the upcoming hurricane season, there haven't been any new predictions this week. And so it is likely that they're going to be coming in frequently as we're going to be heading into next month. But nevertheless, it's always good to talk about what is currently going on out there and uh, what the expectations are. And also, during the final week of March, that is when the hurricane committee is going to be having their 45th session. And so if any names are retired from last year, uh, last year's hurricane season will be uh, hearing about that as well as the replacement name that is of the same letter and gender. And one that is for a fact is Ian. So I'm thinking that Ian might be the only retired name from last year's list because of the destruction and devastation that it caused. But let's wait and see what is going to be happening, guys. And of course, I'm going to be keeping you updated once it is necessary. And so that is pretty much it for this update video. And if you have any questions, you can leave them down in the comments and you can also share your thoughts there and of course remember to always be with wise.